It is finally the day. It has been one year since I built this backyard pond on a budget and right here right now one year later I am going to make it over and give it a nice a little facelift that means adding new plants fish and overall just improving the system to be as natural as possible but before we get started always remember Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. Now before we get into things just as a brief recap behind me was just a pile of dirt no vegetation, no pond. A year ago, I did add this awesome water feature for about $125. Now I did enhance the ground with a couple of plugs of plants and dude, the greenery has absolutely taken over. I added two fish initially, which were bluegills and native predatory species. But unfortunately, one did pass because there wasn't enough room in this 50 gallon setup for the two of them. And then a year later, dude, my bluegill was thriving, flourishing. It froze in Texas and I thought it died. So I didn't throw any food in it. Two months later, I'm scooping out leaves and lo and behold, the bluegill is still alive and doing well on its own with absolutely no food, just munching on insects and other things. And then a couple weeks later, it did pass away. I think one of my dogs might have yanked it out. Foxy, stop. You gotta have a ceremony. Come on guys, you're disrespecting the fallen. But today I'm trying to improve how natural this system is and I want it to be as close to an ecosystem and small pond body of water that you might find out in the wild. All right, so step number one is to turn off the waterfall. That is complete and now I need to drain the pond. So it's no wonder why all the plants surrounding this bad boy are basically on steroids. It's because anytime I refill the pond or anytime I empty some water out, they are getting the most nutritious, naturally filtered water that you can possibly get if you're a plant. So without further ado, man, let's pull out this water so I can remove all the leaves that have fallen in this thing during the fall and uh, we'll get to it. Boy. Okay guys, so now that the pond is empty, it smells absolutely crazy and y'all can see all of the sludge that is in here. All I can say is there are a ton of leaves in the bottom and it looks like a mosquito orgy with all the larvae and that is why I need some fish to make sure that these mosquitoes are not having swingers parties in my backyard. So without further ado, man, I'm going to take out all these leaves and then get to adding a couple more aquatic plants to go with what I already have in the mix. Dude, so this is what happens when you never scoop the surface of your pond. All these leaves, and they smell crazy. So I feel like I got probably 75% of the leaves out of the pond, and now I'm gonna go ahead and remove a lot of the river rocks that I originally threw in, just because I wanna create a new soil layer that does mimic actual ponds found in nature a little bit better. So I got the rocks washed off and I did further deplete the water level in the pond. So now you guys can see there's just a ton of pebbles and I have one plant that I did throw in. So now is the time for me to actually remove the rest of the pebbles and get to creating a biologically natural sediment layer in the pond. So there it is. All the pebbles are out of the pond, or at least like 95.66% of them are removed. All that is left is my one pickerel weed, um, and that was the only pond plant that actually did survive. Now, before I actually add a biologically naturally mimicking sediment layer in this pond, if that makes sense, I wanna go ahead and add a couple of more plants. That way they do sink in and do soak up all of the nutrients that will sink down into the sediment layer of this pond. So let's go get some pond plants. All right, so this was a long trip to get some pond plants, man. Conveniently for me, I have another tub that is stuffed with pond plants on the side of my house. I got all these pickerel weeds on offer up. This guy was deconstructing a koi pond and this is one naturally existing native to North American plant that koi and goldfish will not eat. So if you guys do have a pond, I would grow this dude. It has amazing purple flowers. The seeds are edible. Evidently the shoots are edible, but I put neither in my mouth. But now is the time to get absolutely more disgusting by digging my hands into this to retrieve a few of these plants. And hopefully more plants in the pond will dissuade my dogs from treating it like their private jacuzzi. So let's go ahead and get this guy in and uh, see how it goes. 
Here is two. I do have some horsetail reed in here as well. So I'm gonna see if I can get some of that out. I'm gonna throw the horsetail in here as well, man. All right, so plant number one is gonna be the horsetails. And now these guys are, again, native, but all these plants serve as a natural biological filter to remove any nitrates in the key to the pond for me is to have a low number of fish so that way there aren't too many spikes and to have fish that don't create too much waste. Just enough to munch up all the insects. That way I am not getting West Nile virus. That looks chaotic as hell. Then I added the pickerel weeds that I did pull up and all of these plants are again native to North America and can survive freezes, which is exactly what I needed. So I put one in the corner and then the other two right by the waterfall. That way they wouldn't block my view from my crib. All right. So the plants are in. So now that we have the plants in the pond, it is time to add the sediment layer. Now this is very important. All too often on YouTube, I see people just create ponds with just plastic bottoms, only rock bottoms, and nothing else. Whereas in nature, of course, there'll be a ton of silt, sediment, and nutrition in the soil layer of the pond environment. So I'm actually gonna add a thick layer of topsoil, top it off with sand, top that off with gravel, so that way the water clarity and the water quality is on points. Now I've done this inside my house with a no filter aquarium. Again, I had a light level of fish in there. I have a ton of plants and that is the key to pristine clean water where you don't have to do any water changes and you really don't have to have a crazy filtration system. So that's what I'm going to try and replicate right here in this pond. So let's get to adding all the topsoil. Now when I added the topsoil, my camera battery had died, but I added an inch and a half and then two inches of sand, both of which I got at low. So they're super low cost, but I just want to make sure I added a nice layer of each to sequester all of the waste from the fish so bacteria could eventually break it down. So there we have it. An inch and a half of topsoil, two inches of regular sand, and now we're going to cap it all with the gravel that I did previously pull from the pond and also we'll mix in some of the bigger rocks as well and what that'll serve to do is just create a nice layer where the waste will seep through and nothing will arise back out as the bacteria does break down all the nitrates so let's go now i'm going to sprinkle some uh, clean pea gravel on there as well just to make sure everything is covered. So there we have it guys. We have all the pea gravel in the pond, the river rock in the pond, and now it's time to actually add the water. And instead of adding normal tap water, that'll need to be treated, so that way the fish don't die of the chlorine and fluoride that's up in there, I actually have been sequestering and capturing rainwater from my roof that water tests absolutely perfectly now obviously some leaves fell in this water so the clarity isn't going to be absolutely extravagant but nevertheless the fish can go straight in today and i actually already have them acclimating so it'll be a really quick and easy process so let's get to unloading bucket loads and bucket loads of this rainwater into the pond oh this water is very green All right, I think one more bucket. All right, so we got the water filled in the pond, bruh, and it looks absolutely disgusting. It looks like a witch is trying to like conjure up some potions in here. Man, it looks horrible. But I gotta hook up my nice little waterfall feature, which does have a small filtration system built in. Basically, I just put in a little filter pad in the back of it. So that is full of biological life just to invigorate all the water, even though it probably is already stuffed from being in that trash can for freaking years. But with that being said, I want to wrap the pipe along the back way so it is more concealed because in the last original rendition of the pond, I would see the pipe that led to the waterfall and that was really annoying. So I'm going to conceal carry with it and just string it along the back end instead. So let's do that. And now is the moment of truth and that is to plug in the waterfall. So let's go ahead and make sure it works. You gotta be quick. It's filling up. Yes, sir, in D. 
Madrid. All right, guys, now it's time to add in the fish. I got each one of these fish for 29 cents at Petco, and these are rosy red minnows. Now they are related to the fathead minnows, but these were created by humans as mankind in a lab to have this nice red coloration to them. They look really, really cool. I got 10 of them, man. These are usually just like bait fish for kind of more predatory setups, but they are native. They can survive cold snaps, which is perfect. So let's go ahead and get these guys in. They already have been acclimating outside but we're gonna let them chill in here just for a few more minutes. Then I'm gonna cut open everything and we are going to do the unveiling, unleashing and unreleasing of these minnows. And hopefully they are better than the bluegill, which required a ton of food when it was in here. Now these guys can just munch on flakes, which is super easy to provide. And also any larvae and any little bugs that do land on top of the water. All right, here we go. Moment of truth, time to release the rosy red minnows. Okay guys, so it has been approximately nine days since I finished the pond. It was looking cool, it was looking good, but the water was that slime lime witch green color scheme and after three days it got pretty darn clear and then nine days later the water is crystal clear and the only thing that is making it clear is once again gravity sucking down the sediment and this little waterfall feature that has a tiny little filtration pad in it now i did put the minnows in they are doing great they're hard to see in the afternoon in the morning they're swimming around the bottom but only getting 10 of those little guys that hide in all the plants definitely didn't make much sense so to do a bigger batter ending to this video i did grab a few more fish so check them out guys in these bags we have 20 more rosy red minnows and then two shabunkin goldfish now on the first video i did building this pond someone was like please do not put goldfish in the water with that being said i want to actually be able to see the fish i want to put two goldfish in and then of course they can get up to 18 inches long so as they grow out i am going to move them to the larger ponds that i'm going to put on the property but for now having two small shabunkins ain't gonna be nothing okay and what's really cool is the girl accidentally charged me 36 cents like they were a feeder fish instead of three dollars so I ain't even mad. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and release the minnows, the shabunkins, add a little bit more water, and then we will be done. Let's get ready to rumble! So there it is guys, we are completely done with the pond build. The fish are in, they are thriving, surviving, and I just fed them, which is amazing. Now the water did get more cloudy because I just topped it all off and some of the sediment did rise up because I was impatient with my poor. With that being said, man, I'm excited to see how things progress. Having all the minnows and a couple of goldfish is a lot more exciting to look at and to watch them swim around and interact with the environment more than having one singular bluegill that while it would just snap up on worms, was hard to feed, hard to see, and would kill any tank mate. So this definitely is a better way to go, GI bro. And what's really cool is the horsetails and the pickerel weed, neither of which will be consumed by the goldfish, which are only just glorified carp. So I'm very excited. Definitely be sure to smash that like button if you guys found any enjoyment in this video. Stay tuned because more pond builds are coming soon. But let's close it out with a little bit of footage of the pond when the water was crystal clear. So 
definitely be sure to subscribe if you guys enjoy this content. And always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. I'll catch y'all very soon. Peace. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life I roost And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.